Hello, it's Dr. McLean, and I wanted to shoot a quick video for you guys because I've been getting a lot of questions and a lot of people I've been dealing with in the office in terms of coaching on this, and I've been dealing with a lot of people on the phone and conference calls, videos, and phone calls that are stressed, they're really stressed, they're anxious, they're fearful, they're depressed with all the things that are going on right now, the uncertainty. So I wanna share some tips with you that have helped me tremendously to deal with not only the current situation, but here's the cool thing about this, and I want you to get excited about this if you are feeling anxious and stressed, that this is an opportunity to develop these skills that will serve you not only in this moment of what's going on right now, but long term. Okay, and I love this quote from Tony Robbins that says, the state that you're in at any given moment determines your perceptions of reality and thus your decisions and behavior. In other words, your behavior is not the result of your ability, but of the state that you're in in the moment. And I'm sure you've done this before, maybe you, not you, I've, I've done this before, where you did something harsh with, you know, you mistreated your, your spouse or your kids, where you maybe lost your temper with them, not because of necessarily anything that they did, but because you, you were grumpy in that moment and you kind of took it out on them. You know, we're all human, we've all done that before. But the cool thing is you can train your state to be at this ideal state, emotional state, in any given moment to help you perform in that moment. And it's not that we're perfect, we're gonna have, you know, our emotions aren't bad. You know, being fearful, anxious, those can drive us to do positive things. So those emotions are bad, but we wanna use those emotions to our advantage. We wanna use stress to drive us forward to achieve the goals and the things that we wanna have in our life. So you can use these things, yes, I'll give you some tips that you can start utilizing right away in the moment, short term, you can, I mean, as soon as you get done with this video, you can start to put these in, into action, but to develop habits that are gonna serve you long term that you can use to help you attract more money, to create more wealth, to have better relationships, to get more enjoyment out of your life. I can just tell you my quality of life is so much better today than it was five or seven years ago, not because necessarily my financial situation or different things like that, but I'm just in a much better place emotionally to enjoy my life. And I'm not here to tell you what yours should be, but to develop the skills to develop it to be what you want it to be. And if you have questions on this, please reach out after I get done, email me, call me, be happy to get on the phone with you. We do lots of coaching on the phone as well if you can't be there in person. So I'm just gonna go through four things that you can do, maybe some bonus material, but let's start with number one is just breathing, okay? So when we are stressed, you know, think of just, I want you to give you some analogies you can remember this stuff long-term. If you've ever seen, you know, especially, sometimes this happens in the wild with animals, but two males, they get in a heated argument, and what do they do? They, they puff up their chest, right? They puff up their chest, and we start to breathe. When we're stressed or anxious, we get into what's called a fight or flight response, and we breathe up in our chest. They call it chest breathing. And if you look at a baby and you watch a baby that is very relaxed, how do they breathe? They're breathing in their belly, their belly's moving in and out. And so we have two states of our, or two areas of our nervous system. We have um, the fight or flight system and we have the rest and relax, what's called parasympathetic versus sympathetic. We wanna spend most of our time in the parasympathetic state, the rest and relax. So think of a baby, we wanna breathe through our bellies. That's where we spend most, should spend most of our time. So when you're, you can use this as a technique to train yourself, but then you can also use that in the moment. So let, let me show you what I mean. So you wanna think of this, and I encourage you to write this down, um, four, five, six. You can do this a, a few different ways, but just think of four, five, six is the easiest way to remember this, okay? So you wanna practice this, and then like I said, you can use it in the moment. So four, five, six means you're gonna inhale through your nose at a count of four. So you inhale through your nose, you're just gonna count to yourself, one, two, three, four, nice and slow. And then you're gonna hold that for roughly a count of five, and you can do up to seven if you want. You can do a bit longer if you want. And then you're gonna exhale of a count of six, or anywhere up to six to eight, okay? So that means you could do four, five, six, or you could do four, and then hold it for seven, and then exhale for eight. But here's the key, when you exhale, you wanna blow like you're blowing through a straw, or you're blowing out birthday candles, okay? So you'd go inhale, one, two, three, four, through your nose, You'd hold it, and, and when you're inhaling through your nose, you want your belly to expand, not your chest, but you think about your belly going out, the air going into your belly. You're gonna hold that for roughly anywhere from a five to a seven count, 
and then you're gonna exhale for anywhere from six to eight. So if you inhaled for four, hold for five, and exhale for six, that'd be one way to do that. So I'd recommend to do this is to do this in the morning, first thing in the morning, do it eight or 10 times. You could do it while you're driving into the office or into your work in the morning. Do it at lunchtime, same thing, roughly eight to 10 times. Do it in the evening eight to 10 times. And then anytime you start to feel yourself getting a little bit anxious, a bit stressed, you can do this breathing. Now, if you're in a conversation with somebody, you're starting to feel a bit anxious, you can just do a modified version of it. Just think about breathing through your belly. And the cool thing about this is this type of breathing will start to deactivate the fear centers in your brain. And we'll go from that fight or flight response into being a little more relaxed and we can make better decisions in that moment, okay? So if you can start to practice this, you'll start to spend more time in that rest and relaxed state and you're gonna make better decisions, you're gonna perform better, whether it's at work, whether that's in relationships, whether that's with your family, with your kids or your coworkers, okay? So that's number one. Number two is gratitude, okay? Now, we, when we're especially in a fearful state, our brain is on high alert and we're looking for things, we're looking for danger. That's what our brain is designed to do. So if you're feeling fearful, if you're feeling anxious, guess what? That makes you human. But because of our modern times, we don't need to spend as much time there. We don't need to be in this high alert status. So we need to retrain our brains a little bit to look for more opportunities. You actually have something in your brain called the reticular activating system. It's just like a Google search for your brain, but you program it what to look for. And the more you can start to focus in on gratitude, you're gonna find more opportunities to be thankful for. And it's gonna help again, open up your awareness to look for more opportunities, whether that's financial opportunities, relationships, etc. okay? So what I would recommend to do, and I highly recommend if you can physically write this out, first thing in the morning, just take a piece of paper, you can do a journal, a blank piece of paper, and just write down three things that you're grateful for. And each time you write those things down, really feel that thing, okay? So you could write, I would try to do at least one thing that's very, very simple, like running water, okay? Running water, having a bed to sleep in, having a roof over your head, having food in your fridge, the things that you take for granted. I mean, one of the things I always think about, and it always breaks my heart when I think of a parent that has a child that's very sick or has cancer, is in the hospital. I've got um, three amazing kids. I'm just so thankful for their health every single day. So you can also contrast this. You could say, well, yeah, I'm thankful for water, but imagine when you wake up in the morning, you don't have any running water you'd be a lot more thankful for water. So you can use what's called the contrast principle to kind of double down on that gratitude. So you write that down every single morning and you're gonna to start to open up your awareness and start to realize you've got way more things to be grateful for. And if you could operate from that state, meaning when we're in fear, we tend to make bad, bad decisions, okay? So if you're in a fearful state, you're gonna make um, short-term bad decisions, when you're coming from a place of gratitude, that doesn't mean you don't have a challenge, maybe you've got a financial challenge, but you're starting with the fact, okay, maybe I don't have exactly the car that I want, but I have a car. Maybe I don't have the home that I want, but I've got a home. So if I can start from that scenario, meaning, okay, thank you for what I have, now let's make a decision about my finances for the long term versus a fearful situation of what I've got to do right now, okay? So hopefully that helps. That, that will make a big, big difference in your life if you can start to operate from that state, okay? So that's gratitude. Number three, and this can really, really be a big thing, is some type of a morning ritual. Okay, my wife said don't, she doesn't like the word routine, but you can call it a ritual, you can call it a uh, routine, you can call it a habit. Having a repeatable sequence that you do every single morning when you wake up, and that include, could include the gratitude. Um, but if you think of like really high level athletes, football players, baseball players, or maybe actors or actresses, they have a routine that they go through to get them in an emotional state before they perform, right? Because they wanna be in this ideal state. They're not just gonna wake up and you know walk out on stage or walk out on the playing field. They have a sequence of events that they go through. You know, An hour before the game, they eat this snack, and then they start to get their uniform on 45 minutes before, and then they're stretching or whatever their sequence is. Um, a lot of these athletes, I mean, their, pre, their pre-game routine starts hours and hours before their actual performance. I remember reading about Andre, I read a um, biography on Andre Agassi, the, the uh, professional tennis player, and he talked about towards the end of his career when he's having more injuries and things like that. I mean, his routine started six or eight hours 
before his actual tennis match. When he first got up in the morning, went to this exact routine. So if you can have a repeatable routine, you can start from that baseline, okay? I'll give you one more example of this. When I was a kid, my father was a private pilot. So I got to fly a lot as a kid in these little tiny planes, these Cessna 172s and Piper, Piper Warriors. And when we go out and we lived in a small town in the airfield, I mean, there'd usually be nobody else out there. And so there wasn't a control towering like that. But my dad would go through this pre-flight routine and he actually had a checklist and go, he would check this and check this and check this. And he had this tiny little window that he would open up on the pot in the, in the cockpit of the plane and he would yell clear. And before he started the engine to make sure that there's nobody in front of the plane. Now there was nobody for miles around. And I thought it was kind of funny that he always did this routine and you actually yell out loud clear, but he wanted to be so specific. You're driving down the road in your car and it breaks down. You just pull to the side of the road. It's not that big a deal. But if you're in a plane and you forget to do something like put fuel in or whatever, and your plane plane breaks down, you're flying, you're probably going to die. So I want you to think about not necessarily life and death, but when you wake up in the morning, having this routine because each of your days stacks on top of each other and creates the life, good or bad, that you want to have, right? That you desire. And it's these ones each day that we think are I mean, these little moments that are seem insignificant build up to create the life that we love or maybe the life that we hate, okay? So think of that routine and it can be five minutes long, it can be 10 minutes long, it can be two hours long. Mine's about 40 to 45 minutes every single morning. And if you want more advice on help on that, how to set that up, please let me know. I can go through that with you, okay? Last one is a mindset shift, okay? And, and I discovered this about three years ago, I slipped on the ice and I broke my hip. It was just the shocker of my life. I was not expecting that. And it radically altered my life. I was home for about three and a half months. I went to um, you know, running my business to be more of a stay-at-home dad. And it really just shifted things for me. But because I had learned some of these techniques before this happened, it helped me tremendously. So if you can just do this one little thing, every time you get into what might be what you consider a crisis situation, or a challenging situation, the questions that you ask yourself in that moment will change the way that you approach that challenge and how you respond to that challenge. So one of the things that I was taught is to ask myself, what's the opportunity? What's the opportunity? What's the opportunity? Because when I broke my hip, again, I was kind of a self-quarantine. And I mean, I didn't have to necessarily leave the house, but it was much more challenging. I couldn't drive for a period of time and I was quote unquote stuck in my house. But when I started asking myself, you know, what's the opportunity? What's the opportunity here? Well, um, as a parent, I got to spend more time with my children. I could go and be more of a stay-at-home dad and spend more time with my children. And I've never met a parent in my life that when their kids were growing up, they ever said, man, I wish I wouldn't have spent so much time with my children when they were younger. I've never heard a parent say that. So I thought, you know what? I've got the opportunity to spend more time with my children. I started to learn some of these skills I'm using now, video skills. And uh, internet skills that I didn't have the time to work on before that and more time because again, I was more at home. And so I, I kept asking myself, especially in those days where I got frustrated and I got angry and I got mad because of what had quote unquote happened to me, I started to ask those questions. What's the opportunity? I started to find the opportunity. The only thing you can do is say, why is this happening for me versus to me? When we say what's happening to me, we come from a big victim perspective, but you can say, why did this happen? for me, again, you're gonna to start to look for those opportunities. And there's just always opportunities. That doesn't mean there's not challenges. And it doesn't mean you can't get upset, but you don't wanna stay there for, for the long term, okay? So just starting to ask better questions. One thing you can do is just take a little index card and write these down, write down these questions. And um, your brain will start to look for different am answers. Now we'll start to program that reticular activating system that I had mentioned earlier. Okay, so last thing, just in closing here, is to remember that you want to make these things a habit. So if anything, just start with one of these things. I gave you four tips. Start with just one of these things and start to make those a habit. So just start to your gratitude every single day. Do that for a week or two. And once it becomes a habit, then you start to implement the next step. And again, if you have questions or any of these things, please email me. You can message me on Facebook. Um, call me and I'd be happy to get on the phone with you. Again, I do coaching with clients online as well on the phone. So um, I'd be happy to work with you and do anything I can to help you. So any of these questions on this, please let me know.